Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, we're here at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019 in San Diego. I'm Stu Miniman, we've got over 12,000 in attendance here, and we have a three guest lineup of KubeCon veterans here. Uh, to my right is Loris Dejirani, uh, who's the CTO and founder of Sysdig. To his right, representing the Tiger, is Amit Gupta, who's Vice President of Business Development and Product Management at Tigera, and also Knox Anderson, who's Director of Product Management we know from the uh, octopus on that, that also means that he's with Sysdig. So gentlemen, thank you all for joining. Octopus and tiger. Octopus Glad to be and here. tiger, bringing it all together on the two. We have a menagerie as it, as it were. So, Loris, let, let, let's start. As I said, you know, all veterans, you've been here. You've almost been to every single one. Uh, something about a you know, child being born made you miss one. The very um, first one. So, uh, wh why don't you bring us in kind of, you know, what's so important uh, about this ecosystem, why it's growing so fast, and, and Sysdig's relationship uh, with the community. Yeah, I mean, you can just look around, right? Uh, KubeCon uh, is growing uh, year after year, it's becoming bigger and bigger, and that's just a reflection of the community get, getting bigger and bigger every year, right? It really looks like uh, uh, we are, you know, here with this community creating the next stack, you know, for, uh, for computing, for cloud computing, and really, you know, Kubernetes is, is becoming the op operating system powering, you know, the cloud, and uh, the whole CNCF ecosystem around it is really becoming essentially the ecosystem around it. And the beauty of it is uh, it's completely open this time, right? For the first time in history. All right, so, so since you are the founder, I, I need to ask, give me the why. So, uh, you know, we, we've been saying on, you know, we started this program almost 10 years ago, and the big challenge of our time is, you know, building software for distributed systems, cloud's doing that, edge is taking that even further. You know, bring us back to that, that moment of, to, you know, the, the birth of Sysdig, and, uh, you know, how that plays into all the open source and, uh, you know, growth that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, Sysdig was born, uh, so first of all, a little bit of background on me. Uh, I've uh, been working uh, in open source and networking for my whole career. My previous company was uh, the business behind Warshark, the network analyzer. So, a huge open source community and uh, 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 working with enterprises all around the world essentially to bring visibility over their networks. And then uh, I started realizing the stack was changing radically, right? With the advent of cloud computing, with the advent of containers and Docker, with the advent of, uh, of Kubernetes. Uh, it, legacy ways of, of, of approaching the problem were just not working. We're not working at a technical level uh, because uh, you need to create something completely new for the new stack, but they were also not working at the approach level. Every, everybody, ev everything was proprietary. Everything was in silos, right? So the approach now is much more like inclusive, uh, inclusive and community first. And uh, that's why I decided to start this day. All right, yeah. so Amit, we know things are changing all the time. One thing that does not ever change is security is, is paramount. Uh, yeah, I, I really say, you know, I go back 10 or 15 years, uh, you know, they got a lot of lip service around security. Today, it's a board level discussion, money, uh, development, especially here in the cloud native space, uh, it's really important. So talk about uh, Tigera relationship with Sysdig and, uh, you know, very much focused on the Kubernetes ecosystem. Absolutely, so I, I couldn't agree more with you, Stu. I mean, security is super critical, and more so now as folks are deploying more and more mission critical applications on a Kubernetes-based platform. So, I mean, Sysdig is a great partner for us. Tigera provides networking and network security aspect of that uh, Kubernetes deployment. And if you think about, I mean, how modern applications are built today, you've taken a big large monolith, decomposed into hundreds of microservices, so those procedural calls uh, that were happening inside the code are now API calls on the network. So you got a much bigger network attack surface, it's highly distributed environment, so the traditional architectures where you manage the security, typically with a firewall or a gateway, it's not sufficient, it's important, it's needed. And that's really where, uh, as people design their architecture, they have to think about how do you design security across that entire infrastructure in a distributed fashion, all done in a early stages of your projects. Yeah. Uh, Knox, uh, help us understand the relationship here, how it fits into Sysdig's product with Tigera. Yeah, so uh, 
We're great partners with Tigera. Tigera uh, lives at the network security level. Um, Cystic Secure and the product that we've built uh, extends the instrumentation that Laura started off with our open source tool uh, to provide security across the entire container lifecycle. So at build time, making sure your images are properly configured, free of vulnerabilities. At runtime, looking at all the activity that's happening. And then the big challenge in the Kubernetes space is around incident response and audit. So if something happens in that pod, Kubernetes is going to kill it before anyone can investigate, and Cystic helps you with those workflows. Yeah, maybe it would help. We, we all throw around these terms cloud native mm -hmm. a lot, and it's a term I've heard for a number of years, but the definition, like cloud itself, is one that you know, matures over time and we get there, so maybe if we focus in a little bit on cloud native security. You know, what is it we're hearing from customers? What does it mean to really build you know, cloud native security? What makes that different? from you know, the security we've been building in our data centers, in clouds for years? Well, I thought cloud native was just a buzzword. Does it actually mean something? Well, hopefully <laughs> it is more than just a buzzword, and that's what I'm hoping no, you, you can explain. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, so, um, again, uh, the way I see it is uh, um, uh, the real change uh, uh, that we are witnessing is uh, how software has been written. And, uh, uh, we're touching a little bit uh, this point. Uh, software that tended to be uh, architected as big monoliths uh, now uh, is being split uh, into smaller components. And uh, this is uh, just a reflection of uh, software development teams uh, in, in a general way being much more efficient when you can essentially break the problem into sub-problems and break the responsibilities into sub-responsibilities. Uh, this is uh, per se something that is uh, extremely beneficial, es essentially in terms of productivity, but also sort of revolutions, the way you write software, you run software, you maintain software, CI, CD, you know, continuous development, uh, continuous integration pipelines, uh, uh, the reliance uh, uh, on, on Git and, uh, and source code repository for, you know, to, to store everything. And uh, this also means that uh, um, securing uh, monitoring, troubleshooting infrastructures becomes much different. And one of the things that we're seeing is uh, legacy tools don't work anymore, and the new approaches like Calico networking, or like Falco in runtime security, or like Cisnic Secure uh, for uh, uh, the life cycle and, uh, and security of containers are starting bubbling up as, as alternatives to the old way of doing things. I mean, I would add to that, I agree with you. Um, I would add that like if you're defining a cloud native security, the cloud native means it's a distributed architecture. So your security architecture got to be distributed as well. Absolutely got to plan for that. And then to your point, you have to automate the security as part of various aspects of your life cycle. Security cannot be an afterthought. You have to design for that right from the beginning. And then one last thing I would add is, just like your applications are being deployed in an automated fashion, your security has to be done in that fashion. So policy as code, infrastructure as code, and the security is just baked in as part of that process. It's critical you design that way to get the best outcomes. Yeah, and I'd say the asset landscape has completely changed. Uh, before you needed to surface a finding against um, a host or an IP, now you need to surface vulnerabilities and findings against clusters, namespaces, deployments, pods, services, and that huge explosion of assets is making it uh, much harder for teams to triage events, vulnerabilities, and it's really changing the process and how the SOC works. And the fact that the landscape uh, of the asset is changing also is reflected on the fact that the persona landscape is changing. So uh, the separation between uh, devs and, and operation people is uh, uh, becoming thinner and thinner. And uh, more and more uh, security becomes resp responsibility of the operation team, yeah. which is the team in charge of essentially owning the infrastructure and taking care of it, not only from the operational point of view, but also from the security. Well, yeah, I, I think, I, Ahmed, I, I, I've heard the point that you've made uh, many times. The security can't be a bolt-on or an afterthought. Uh, it, it's, it's really something fundamental if you talk about DevOps, is it, it needs to be just baked into the process. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, as I've heard, you know, chanted at some conferences, you know, security is everyone's responsibility. Uh, you know, make, make sure you step up. Um, 
We're talking a lot about open source here. There's a couple of projects, you mentioned Falco and Calico. Um, you know, you, you, you're partners with Red Hat. I remember going to the Red Hat show yeah. years yeah. ago and they'd run these studies and be like, people were worried that you know, open source and security you know, couldn't go side by side, but no, no, you could actually, you know, open source is secure, but taking the next step and talking about you know, building security products with open source, give us you know, where that stands today and how customers are you know, embracing that and you know, how, how we can actually keep up with the, the ever-expanding threat surfaces and attacks uh, yeah. that are coming out. First of all, as we know, uh, open source is actually more secure and we're getting proof of that you know, pretty much on a daily basis, including you know, the fact that uh, uh, tools like Kubernetes you know, are uh, regularly scrutinized uh, by, by the, the, the security ecosystem and uh, 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 vulnerabilities are found early on and disclosed. Uh, in particular, SysDig uh, uh, is uh, the original creator of uh, Falco, which is uh, an open source uh, CNCF based uh, anomaly detection system that is based on collecting high granular data from a running Kubernetes environment for example, through the capture of uh, system calls and uh, understanding the activity of the containers and being able to alert uh, about anomalous behavior. For example, somebody being able to break into your container, exfiltrating data, or modifying binaries, or uh, you know, perpetrating an attack, or stuff like that. Uh, we decided to uh, go uh, with an approach that is open source first, because uh, first of all, of course, we believe into participating with the community and giving something as an industry player to the community. But also we believe that you really achieve better security by being integrated in the stack, right? It's very hard, for, for example, to have, I don't know, security in AWS that is really deeply integrated with the, with the cloud stack of Amazon, right? Because it's proprietary. While with Kubernetes, solutions like Falco or even like Calico, we can really work with the rest of the community to have them really tightly coupled and so much more effective uh, than, than we could do in the past. Yeah, I mean, I would make uh, one additional point to your question. It's not only that users are adopting open source security, it's actually very critical that security solutions are available as an open source because, I mean, look around us here. This is a community of open source people. They're building a distributed infrastructure platform that is all open source. So we're doing this service if we don't offer a good set of security tools to them, not an open source. So that's really our fundamental model. That's why Calico provides two key problems, networking and network security for our users. You deploy your clusters, your infrastructure, and you have all the bells and whistles you need to be able to run a highly secure, highly performing cluster in your environment. Uh, and I, I believe that's very critical for this community. Yeah, and I'd say uh, in, now with open source, uh, prevention has moved into the platform. So uh, with network policy and things like Calico or in our 3.0 launch, uh, we incorporated the ability to automate tests and apply pod security policies. And those types of prevention mechanisms weren't available in your platforms before. Okay, uh, you know, I, I often find if you've got any customer examples, talk about you know how they're running this in production, uh, kind of the, the key when they when they use your solutions, uh, you know the, the benefits that they're having. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a few examples. I mean, today it is probably fair to say Calico, I mean, from the partial phone home to data we get, hundred thousand plus clusters across the globe. Some of the I can't take the example like the actual names of the customers, but. Um, some of the largest banks are using Calico for their enterprise networking scenarios and essentially doing policies, the segmentation inside their clusters to be able to uh, manage uh, the security for those workloads inside their environments. Uh, so that's what I would say. Yeah, and uh, since the, again, uh, we have an open core uh, a base with, with Falco and then we offer uh, a commercial product called Sysdig Secure. In particular, this last week, we released version 3.0 of uh, uh, our commercial product, which is another interesting dynamic because we can offer the open core, essentially, to the community, but then offer additional features with our commercial product. And uh, uh, Palco you know, is installed uh, uh, in uh, uh, many, many thousands, essentially, of clusters, and Sysdig Secure, uh, you know, secures 
and, uh, and offers visibility to the biggest enterprises in the world. Uh, we have deployments that are uh, uh, at a huge scale with the biggest banks, uh, insurance companies, uh, media companies, and uh, we tend to, fall, to cover the full life cycle of applications because as the applications and as the software moves in the CI/CD pipeline, so security needs to, needs to essentially ac accompany the application through, through the different stages. All right, well thank you all three of you for providing the update. Really appreciate you joining, joining us in the program and have a great rest thank of the week. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. Us. We'll be back with more coverage here from KubeCon, CloudNativeCon. I'm Stu Miniman and thanks for watching theCUBE.